line. If you got a question, uh, feel free to come up and, and get in line and, and ask your question. Would we have to level up thirty? Yes. Oh, good. <laughs> yes. yes. Well, first of all, uh, welcome to Phoenix. And uh, I can't tell you how many times my wife and I have said, "Well, what are we going to watch tonight?" And we don't even consider commercial TV anymore. And hey, let's restart Babylon Five. And uh, um, and to us, it's just it's magic. It's transported. What was it like to work with such a, which what, what seemed like such a great ensemble cast, and actually to get to work with a great writer, and to actually finish a story arc? What was that like? It's well, it was a struggle to do that. I mean, like I said earlier, uh, guy there, that uh, it it was. Listen, we all became very much a family. That's why I'm very much mourning Jeff's passing. Uh, became very, very close friends. See, we were we shot Babylon 5 out in a warehouse that was converted into a sound stage. The way out in North Hollywood, it was called Sun, uh, Sun, Sun Valley, pardon me. Uh, and it's not in uh, Idaho. Uh, <laughs> we were, and, and so we were not on the Warner Brothers lot. We truly were, like, out on a space station. We were so away from anything, anyone else in show business or any other shows or anything. So, like, when guest stars would come and go, so what's new out there? What have you heard? <laughs> 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 uh, you know. <laughs> so we were very isolated out there. And um, uh, we still even had the sign on the front of the building. And it was an old hot tub factory. It was called Aquatech. <laughs> it was still there, so no one knew where the hell we were out there. And, uh, um, so we became very, very close. Uh, my relationship with Joe uh, Straczynski was sometimes uh, rocky. <laughs> I'm not the easiest person in the world, and but I'm not the worst. I mean, he and I. It was contentious sometimes. That's what he wanted to be. It's creative, and that's what creative people are. When you read about all this stuff that people fight and this and that, yeah. Anybody in your family fight with him? I mean, come on. <laughs> when you become a family, you 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 know each other. You're, you know, uh, and so day in and day out, fourteen hours a day, where it is, and uh, so it, it does. The cast always got along. We never had any prima donnas, other than me. Uh, <laughs> Really, uh, it was a great ensemble, and uh, when someone like when Jeff came in, um, it was they were welcome. They were brought in. I was welcome and brought in. I, remember, I, I never had. I always started shows. I had never come in after its first season already, and um, and it was dicey whether I could carry it off. I mean, no one knew, and there, there was a, a reaction from the real diehard fans that the show had that early on. Uh, Bruce Box, or whatever the scarecrow goes out in space. And all of those comments, you know, we were just getting, it was just now the internet was happening. That show was at the forefront of all of that, so there was all these fan sites and stuff, and they were making comments. They weren't sure. I smiled too much. I wasn't dark and grim. And you know, all those things that they wanted me to be. And um, so I had a lot to live up to. And I think Joe gave me a great character. And he started fleshing it out as I was going along. You know, it all wasn't written in stone before all of us walked into it. He had it all out there. It was all out on his storyboards and stuff. But he knew how to adapt. We had to adapt to the personalities of the actors. You know, I was sort of a generic, uh, my name was going to be Stryker or Strider. There was all kinds of, we came to Sheridan, which was great. Um, you know, he had this, he has a, this great ability to sit and listen and learn and hear us talk at lunch. Like Jerry Doyle's famous line, we got in a big political argument about something about capital punishment or something, and Jerry said, I think they ought to have electric bleachers. <laughs> say that, right? Because <laughs> Joe drew a good line when he heard it. And he adapted that right in, you know? And, you know that's what's marvelous with this, you know, uh, he adapted the it started to sound more the way I talked. You know, he adapted John Sheridan to Bruce Boxlinger, Bruce Boxlinger and John Sheridan. So, uh, and that's a, it takes a big talent to do that. 
But yeah, we did. We had uh, there's a lot of fights. I, I have to say it, but but I, it was probably more with our front office that we were in conflict with. But that's typical in every business, right? The bosses and they come out. We had our best lunches, by the way, when we headed uh, Warner Distribution. You guys would come out every once, every few months, just to come out. We'd have lobster. <laughs> no greasy cheeseburgers were out, and uh, things like that that we had to actually eat very well. And you can imagine. Like, you saw my waistline getting bigger and bigger. We <laughs> uh, had to let out that uniform for a few months. Uh, we never had time for. Uh, uh, we couldn't work out or anything. We never had time. Uh, I had to do that on the weekends. So it was pretty difficult. So anyway, it was life on the space station. You know, you had to watch the calories. <laughs> And uh, but everybody, you know, when Tracy came in and adapted, and, and uh, my dear Claudia left, that was all politics. It was rumors and stuff. It was all politics. It was all, um, uh, you know. And I really loved Claudia because she was she was the one when I entered the show. She kind of like really took me around and, and, and made me feel comfortable. And obviously, the, that uh, those two characters were I thought very well written. Sheridan and uh, Ivanova. I hadn't said that name in years. Ivanova. Ivanova. Uh, and I, th I think that reflects my first episodes of the show, the second season. Uh, she really helped me uh, get into the show. She would, I have to always really give Claudia uh, credit for that. And uh, I missed her. So, and I was angry when she left. I started kicking flats, and knocking things down. I almost kicked Kosh right in his fat ass. <laughs> I was angry. I guess I don't mess when it's working. When it's working well, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Try to fix it. And that was constantly going on. But it was always outside people doing that. Warner Brothers, you know. Who never gave a damn about us. You know, by the way, they, they, we were saying to Warner Brothers, you know, you have a great franchise here, like Paramount had with Star Trek. Why don't you do that? Why don't you pour some more money into it? We were always on this shoestring budget. And um, they said, why do we need a franchise? We have Looney Tunes already. <laughs> <laughs> Looney Tunes. That's <laughs> yeah, the range of the imagination. <laughs> they could have had a really something, you know, uh, just a, it's, I feel that we went off just as, as the sort of mainstream American, mainstream audience was kind of discovering us. You know, it was always a sort of a cult thing. But uh, once we made it on the front, I was telling the kids in the show, I said, when we made the cover of TV Guide, don't think that an insignificant thing in those days. Because I said, that's the most wide, that's the widest uh, subscribed uh, magazine in the country. It's in everybody's home, you know, TV Guide, believe it or not. That was a more important magazine than any but uh, those other sci-fi magazines were. That was the most important one, because that went to people that had no idea who we were. And it might have sparked them to go, hmm, I'd like to see this show, you know? And of course, in their uh, incredible intelligence, that's when they took us off the air. So, uh, I still think we could have gone on. Uh, I will argue with Joe to live my blue in the face with it. But I thought, right, it just didn't make sense. He could have ended that song and it continued with another one. And he created all those characters, just like Gene Roddenberry did. Huh? Come on. Um, so, anyway. It comes, I just turned 60 when you start repeating this. <laughs> well, what? Oh, uh, yeah. I was just going to say thank you for giving us a little bit of that magic to look back to. And uh, with all, with everything that went on, it, it was magic. It well, magic. I think there's going to be uh, Blu-ray editions. I think if there is anything that's yeah. another gentleman, if there's anything new in that, uh, that uh, it's going to be, I think that they're repackaging the whole thing again so it's supposed to come out. I don't know when, though. Uh, that was the only rumor I heard. Uh, did, does JMS still go on? Does he go online? Who does? He's on Twitter now. Is he Twitter? He's been on Twitter about two right. weeks ago. Like <laughs> um, but I think he's kind of giving like hints like he always did. Uh, I think he said there was going to be something special coming along. I think, I think that's what it is. And a Warner Home video finally realized um, what they had, but it was gone already. You know, Warner Brothers, I think they had something special. They, you know, they just didn't have the imagination at the time to uh, follow through. Thank you very much. You're welcome.
Mr. Boxlinger, thank yes. you again for joining us out here in the heat in Phoenix. I love it. I do. Fantastic. Um, with the voice well, acting. I saw how to do. <laughs> <laughs> again. <laughs> At least the nights are gorgeous. Um, with the voice acting you've been doing for Tron Uprising, how different is that from the film acting we've seen you do in Battlestar Galactica? Or, oh, excuse me. I'm off of <laughs> So they just 
It's a restaurant now. Thing. Huh? It's a restaurant now. I went and found it when I was visiting the when I was in California. I don't know. I didn't go in. I just took pictures of the outside. I think, I think it's a Japanese restaurant now. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> restaurant. <laughs> well, we made a beautiful, a beautiful recreation of it up there, the interior and uh, exterior. And uh, so, movies. It's magic. <laughs> Uh, yes. My second question is, uh, do you still fight for the users? I always fight for the users. <laughs>